Shall I wham you, Ashavella? Shall I wham? Kalayum, Hayanawa, Yahawa, Bahasim, Yahawasai, Bahasim, Rakat Kodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders of great Muslim, the teacher of the Ruwa, the top minister's truth. Peace salutation to the Akim, the fellow labor, the hope of the elect, preaching this truth that we're going to align to a poor fellow. To the apostles listening and listening and learning, shall I want? Uh, we'll get right into it. Out here once again to prophesy the downfall of America the Great, Babylon the Great, the war that right in front of peace, right? And the peace for plaintiffs. In the house of Israel, Israel being a people for a place, right? You know, right? Repentance and then salvation, right? And before the salvation, destruction will come in the way of thermonuclear, intercontinental ballistic missiles, which shall lay waste, make America the great desolate. Waste, a land of desert animals, right? We'll get right into it. Right, the world, world War III is steadily approaching. Right? A lot, of, a lot's going on. Right? Joel chapter three, verse one. The points in nine. And it reads, and it reads, for behold, meaning look, in those days and in that time, when it shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, right? And the Most High is about to, about to take away the, 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 the captivity. Bring back the captivity, take it away of, of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Judah being the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the dark tribes. Jerusalem being the, 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 the northern kingdom. The Latinos, the so-called Latinos, and the so-called indigenous, right? These are the, 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 these are the times we're in, where the Mosai is gonna take us out of our captivity. Cause we're still in our captivity right now, right? We just turned in our yokes of iron, for, 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 for fees and licenses, right? Which Esau has control over. Verse two, I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? Jehoshaphat, down there in the Middle East. Jehoshaphat being the Lord's judgment, right? Mosai is gathering all these nations in the Middle East, the valley of decision, Valley of Jehoshaphat for judgment, man. And how's that judgment going to take place? War. Right? We see we see America the Great saying, "Ah, uh, they're they're extending, they're 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 broadening the draft to entail women." Right? They're preparing for war. Right? <laughs> and we'll plead with them there, plead meaning to judge. For my people and for my heritage, right? You Israelites, Israel being a people before a place, whom they have scattered among the nations and part of my land, right? Israelites, they're scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, man. You so-called Latino, you so-called Negro, you so-called, you so-called Indigenous, throughout the four corners. Israelites everywhere, man. Right? Right? And and and, and the Most High put the Spirit on Esau to commit atrocities. What do you do to the, 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 the Northern Kingdom? Residential schools, smallpox, sent them as tributes back to the Europe. What do you do to the, the, the Southern Kingdom? Do the Benjamin Levi. Or put them on uh, 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 slave ships owned by the Ishes, the 1948ers, and put them in hardcore bondage on, on the soils of America, America the Great. Right? That's part of the scattering. Among the nations, I'm part of my land, right? Impostors, 1948ers, have divvied up the land, right? Doesn't it say in uh, 
believe it's in uh, Ezekiel. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Ezekiel 36, verse 2. Thus saith Yahweh power, because the enemy, right, Esau, Esau, Edom, the ruling class elites, right, Amalek, over there in the land, because the enemy has said against you, against who? Israelites. Israel being a people for a place. Aha! Even the ancient high places are ours in possession, right? So they laugh. Aha is them laughing that they're there, right? The ancient high places being the, the, the land of Yasharala, man. It's part of the scattering. And then divvying it up and then, and then claiming, the 1948ers claiming a heritage that's not theirs. Joel chapter 3, verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. Israel, Israelites. Israel being a people before a place. What is it? What was it casting a lots? Slave auctions. Right? Who went through that? Judah, Benjamin, Levi from the southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom. Reuben, Simeon, Gad. Ephraim. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink, right? This is what these, this is what these devils did, man. Sold the children of Israel for, come on, uh, uh, treated them as commodities and sold them for, 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 for trinkets, man. For possessions. Right, doesn't it say in Revelation 11? Right, who did this? The Edomites did this. Revelation 11. Get a precept. Revelation 11, verse 10. And it reads. Revelation 11 verse 10 And they that dwell upon the earth Shall rejoice Right? These are the nations, man They rejoice when they had uh, They rejoice from the time they put uh, The Lord's chosen people Into their possession, man Have another precept. Psalms 83, verse 12. Psalms 83, verse 12. And it reads, Who said, Let us take to ourselves the houses of Yahweh in possession? Right? Who did this? Esau. Back to Revelation 11, verse 12. Verse 10, Salat. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall sell gifts to one to another because these two prophets, right, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, tormented them that dwelt on the earth, right? So these are the nations. Exchange the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom as gifts, man, commodities. Joel chapter 3. Verse 3 once again, and it reads, And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a harlot, and sold a girl for wine, that they might drink. Treated the children of Israel like commodities, man. Right? Esau did this, along with other nations. But Esau is the primary culprit. Right? Verse 4, Yeah, and what have ye to do with me? O Tyre and Zidon and all the coasts of Palestine, will ye render me a recompense? And if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your recompense upon your own head? Because ye have taken my silver and my gold, right? The possessions of, 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 of the children of Israel, right? Google uh, the Ark of Titus, right? 
Google the Ark, the Ark of Titus. You know you're an Israelite, right? Yasharala. Yeah, Google the Ark of Titus. Seven eighty when the when the when the when the temple was sacked, right? Every time Israel every time Israel was brought down, they take possessions, the the the, the 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 gold, the jewels, the sacred things, right? This is what Esau did, man. Psalm one thirty seven, right? So a recompense is coming, man. Psalm one thirty seven, verse seven, and it reads. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom, right? Esau, Edom, man. So-called white man, these ruling class elites, the banking families, right? This is their forefathers are talking, we're talking about here in Psalm 137, verse 7. Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof, right? They were happy. They were cheering it on, the destruction of, 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 of the children of Mosai. Right? Doesn't it say in uh, Lamentations? Lamentations, I think. Lamentations. Back to uh, Revelations 11, verse uh, 11, verse 10, once again. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets commended them I dwell on the earth, right? The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, right? Right? Esau, Esau, Edom took them into possession, right? And did nothing but atrocities. Traded them, gave them one to another, and rejoiced over them, man. Right? right? The northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Let's get a quick scripture. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. I believe it's uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 50, verse 33. Thus said Yahweh power of hosts, the children of Israel, and the children of Judah, right, Israel being the, 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 the northern kingdom, you northern tribes, you so-called Latinos, you so-called indigenous, and, and Judah being the, the southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right, were oppressed together, right, here in Babylon, man, America, oppressed at the same time. There's no, history doesn't account the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom being oppressed together at the same time. That's here in America. And all that took them captives, right, these, these Edomites, held them fast. They refused to let them go, right? And, and a recompense is coming, man, right? A recompense is coming. Back to Joel, Joel, chapter 3, verse 5, once again. Because you have taken my silver and my gold 
and have carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things, the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, right? Sold to you Edomites, right? Right? The Grecians were the, the, the Edomites who uh, who possessed the the, the, the the land of Japheth, right? That ye might remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where they have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your head. Right? The Mosai cave ass coming for Esai, man. Right? We see it flipping. These plagues, the plagues are the plagues are coming out. Right? We see Deuteronomy 30, verse 7 coming out. Right? We see World War III rumors of war about to pop off. Verse 8, And I will sell your sons and your daughters unto the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord, Yahweh, has spoken. Right? Ultimately, Esau, beginning with Esau, Edom, beginning with their, their elites, are going to go into captivity in the kingdom of heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, which will be established on earth as it is in heaven. Thus saith the scriptures, man. There's no way around it. Right? This is something that Esau wants to avoid. This is something that uh, Pastor Porchop don't 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 teach his congregation in the Harlot houses, man. They teach prosperity and, and, and love, right? They don't go into the truth. They sell you a lie. That's why two thirds of our people, two thirds of people are gonna stay caught up in them Harlot houses. Right? And it's only the elect will, 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 will hear this song and come out of it. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Here's the point. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Right? So, this, this uh, war is being prepared, man. We see it. Right? These Gentiles, Gentiles these heathen nations, war is being prepared. We see China testing, hyper, testing hypersonic missiles. Right? America the Great uh, claiming, uh, betraying astonishment and worry. Right? Let's get that scripture. Jeremiah 50. They, they, when they heard about this uh, hypersonic missile, they, <laughs> they said they're on the record of saying they don't know where this came from. Right? Jeremiah 50. Right, war's coming. Jeremiah 50. It's a lot. Jeremiah 50, verse 43. And it reads, The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, right? America's government, America's president. They've heard the report. Their ministry, their, 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 their department of defense. They, 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 they hear what's going on, right? The king of Babylon hath heard the report of them, and his hands wax feeble. Anguish took hold of him, and pangs of a woman in travail, right? So they're worried, man. Deep down inside Esau's, Esau's, mili Esau's military, America the Great's military, they are worried, right? And Esau's elites know the, knows the outcome of these scriptures, and they're trying to offset it. Verse 10, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears, that the weak say I'm strong. Right? These other nations, they're proclaiming that they're strong. They're showcasing the military might. Right? Plowshares is farming instruments. Pruning hooks is ah, 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 ah. tree pruners, things that you use to cut trees. So these countries are notoriously known for their uh, Agriculture sector, they're farming, they're, 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 you know, rice paddies, they're fishing, they're, you know, agriculture sector. They're, they're standing up and saying they're ready for war. They're ready. They're strong, right? The most I putting the spirit on them to, 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 to get ready to launch their, 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 their ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missiles. Verse 
verse 11. Joel 3, verse 11. Assemble yourselves and come all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about, thither, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Yahweh. Right, so all these nations are be being gathered for. This is going to be the midst of World War II where, where they're, where they're uh, beefing, going at it, right? And the Mosai is going to come on the sea. The, 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 the mighty wants to come down. That's the chariots. But the world ain't ready to cause UFOs. Right? At that time, the Mosai is going to show his might. Right? It says in uh, the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, yet there is fight. Right? They'll be in fear when they see Yahweh Shai and the angels. But the Most High gonna put the spirit on them to try and fight Yahweh Shai and the angels. That's written. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, right? Out there in the Middle East. For there will I sit up. Salah. For there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about, right? All these other nations. In the midst of World War III, Mosai says he's going to judge them. Right? And how is this war going to be fought? Isaiah 9. Isaiah 9. Verse 5, and it reads, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this, this what? This war. So ancient wars were, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, physical combat. Confused noise, the noise of, uh, you know, soldiers going at it, swords clanging, men perishing from, 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 from sword wounds. Confused noise, right? But this, let's read it. But this, right, this war, right, shall be with burning, and fuel of fire, right? And what's going to cause the burning and the fuel of fire, man? Thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? Zechariah 14, verse 12, right? Mosai Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to melt this place. Thus said the scriptures. Repent, you, 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 you Israelites. Israel being a people before a place. You so called indigenous, you so called Latino, and you so called Negro. Repent, the time's at hand. Zechariah 14, verse 12, and it reads And this shall be the plague wherewith the Yahweh will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem, right? This plague, what is this plague, man? This plague is a thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles, right? Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, right? What's gonna do that, man? Thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles. Fervent heat. It's gonna melt their flesh away while they stand. That's the only thing that will do it. And their eyes shall consume Away in their holes, right? Their eyes are going to melt in their, in their eye sockets. You ever see that movie? Ah, Terminator. Terminator, ah. Uh, one of those Terminators with uh, Sarah Connor. It's, a, it's an epic scene where she's hanging on the fence. And the, mushroom cloud, the mushroom cloud strikes. And then the lake of fire sweeps through the, 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 the infrastructure. While she's hanging on the fence, she, she, it, she, it, right there, she, 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 she burns to a crispy. She turns into a skull, man. She, she, her flesh melts out from off of her skin. That's in that movie Terminator, man. That's predictive programming, Hollywood, and their predictive programming. So only nuclear fire can do that, man. Consume the flesh on you while you stand. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth, right? That thermonuclear intercontinental ballistic missile, the heat, right? Two thirds of our people are gonna perish in it. You see, the nations are gonna perish in it. The wicked elite are gonna be hiding in their bunkers, right? The soils of America is gonna turn into uh, 
a wasteland, a desert. Thus said the scriptures, man. Right? Scriptures talk about World War. One war was passed. Revelation 9, verse 12. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. Right, so what are these woes? These woes is war. War means destruction. These woes is war. One woe is past, World War I. Right, this is the scriptures, man. And behold, there come two woes more. Two more woes. World War II came. World War III is coming, man. Malachi 4 verse 1. We're talking about this destruction, this, th this thermonuclear heat. Malachi 4 verse 1, and it reads, For behold, meaning look, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Right? That's how hot it won't get out here, man. As an oven. Thermonuclear intercontinental miss ballistic missiles. Fervent heat, it says in our... Uh, in our... Uh, Peter, the book of Second Peter. Let's get that. Second Peter three, verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Right, a lot of people will be caught off guard, man. Why? Because they're asleep. Right? They know what's going on. They're not repenting. They're continuing on in their folly. Continue on in their TikTok. Not observing the Sabbath, the law, statute, commandments, committing adultery, eating shrimp, eating crab. Right? That's why it's going to catch them as a thief in the night. Not knowing. Just like that. But the elect have the ice out. The elect see. Lord willing, the Lord willing, we're of that number. Second Peter three verse ten. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens, right, the rulership, these elites, shall pass away with a great noise, right? And what's going to be the great noise? The thermonuclear missiles, man. This rulership that we're under. The wicked, Esau, Edom, Job 9 and 24, they're going to pass away with a great noise. It's in the scriptures. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right. What's going to melt the elements, man? The missiles. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Right, so all the wickedness in here, on the earth, the wickedness, on the earth. This doesn't mean the earth is going to be destroyed. It's telling you that the wickedness and, and, and the people on this planet, two thirds of our people, these heathen nations, they're going to melt in this, man, along with it. Back to Malachi 4 verse 1. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, right, America, Babylon the Great. Nothing's proud like America. Yeah, and all that do wickedly, right, the wicked, two thirds of our people that are wicked, these heathen nations that are wicked, right, shall be stubble, right? What's stubble, man? You ever, you ever light a match to some Kindle? It said in Isaiah 9, burning a people and fuel of fire. Isaiah 9, Isaiah 9 verse, Isaiah 9 verse 19, through the wrath of Yahweh of hosts, right, the wrath, how's this wrath coming? These missiles, Yahweh Shai and the angels, 
and the chariots, what the world even calls UFOs, that's going to be the wrath. Right? Through the wrath of Yahweh, of hosts, hosts being armies, is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. Right? The people are going to be the fuel of this fire, man. We cover that in Zechariah chapter 14. We cover that, we cover that in chapter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. We cover that in Malachi 4 verse 1. And the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother. Right. Yo, listen. It's pretty. What's coming? Right. There's going to be the uproars of people leading up to that. There's going to be class wars, martial law leading up to that. But the love of many shall wax cold. We see that starting out now. No one, no one giving an F about, about, about nobody else. Right? The Most High Yahweh Shem Yahshai put the spirit. Let's get that in uh, Matthew 24. Right? The love of many shall wax cold. I believe it's 24 verse 7. Matthew 24 verse 12. Red letter. Our Lord said it. Yahweh Shai. And because iniquity shall abound, right? We're in that time, man. Iniquity is sin upon sin. We're in that time right now where it's abounding. Abounding meaning to increase. We're in that time. It's not about wickedness out here. Iniquity out here. Alphabet, alphabet, this, alphabet, that. Right? No laws, no statutes, no commandments. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, right? People ain't gonna care, right? You, 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 you touch people with a little bit of hunger or a little bit of oppression along with some hunger, some restrictions. People are losing their mind right now already, man. And there's a lot of people out here who need meds, Esau's meds, which helps them with their headspace. They ain't gonna have that. Malachi 4 verse 1 once again For behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven All the proud Yeah and all them that do wickedly Shall be stubble And the day that cometh shall burn them up Said Yahweh of hosts That it shall leave them neither root nor branch Right Two thirds of people going to perish out here in the nuclear fire And the heathen nation going to perish out here in the, in the nuclear fire the only thing that's going to save you is, 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 is if you're deemed the elect, the most high chosen. That's the only thing, man. Right? The most high, the most high is going to have to be something with you. Deemed you the elect from the, from, the, from, the, from the foundation of the earth. Right? Because the most high chose is from the, from, from, the, from, the, from the foundation of the earth. Romans 8. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow, right? Knew already. We're talking about this, talking about the elect. The most I knew his elect. Foreknew his elect, right? For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. Right? So the most I chose his from the beginning. Right? Doesn't it say in uh, Ephesians 1 verse 5? Let's get that. Ephesians 1 verse 5 and it reads having predestinated us right the elect unto the adoption of children by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to himself according to the good pleasure of his will right so the most high chose his elect predestinated pre-chose right 
So, we don't know for the elect. The elect don't know if they're the elect, but the most I know is who's the elect are. It's only his elect that are, 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 gonna, are gonna escape the destruction. Revelation 11, verse 14. The second world is past, right? That's that second world war, World War II, it's past already. Behold, the third world cometh quickly, right? It's on our doorsteps, man, right? These are the, these nations, these nations are getting ready, right? Right? It's a major prophecy we're waiting on. We're waiting on that. We're waiting on the MOTV, the Marcus Aurelius, the Revelation 13, verse 16. We're waiting on Jacob's trouble, which is ramping up. The elder, the elder apostles say, when we're in the midst of Jacob's trouble, we'll know, right? Job 20, verse 24. Right? Talk some more about these missiles, man. We'll read up. 22. Job 20 and 22. In the fullness of its sufficiency, right? America, in the fullness of its sufficiency, right? America's in the foolishness of its, of its sufficiency right now. America's in the noonday, man. The height of his the height of his kingdom. Right? In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Right? A position of difficulty. He's in that time right now. He's getting it on all ends, man. He's getting it from his from his population. He's getting it from his workers. He's getting it from uh, uh, other nations. He's getting it from NATO. He's hearing threats from, from Gog and Magog, who is Russia. Moab, who is China. He, he's getting it, man. He's in streets. A position of difficulty. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in streets. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Right, let's look at this word wicked in this context. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. That's talking about uh, the workers, the workforce. I believe it's Amal. Right? Job 20. Job 20. Verse 22, let's look at this word wicked. Every hand of the wicked. Ama, yeah, Khan, in the, in the Hebrew, right? Laborer, workman, right? So we see that. Esau's catching hell from his own workforce, man, right? His own workforce. Didn't they, didn't they dub, uh, I believe it was last week, the great. What do they call it? It was in the news, man. Uh, the great resignation, because of the amount of people resigning at once, right? He's talking about his workers, man. This is in the scriptures, right? Harlot House, not, Harlot House don't touch these scriptures. Wacky Tacky don't touch these scriptures, man. Jake need to come out of that. Job 20, verse 22, once again. In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Right? We see that his workers, his workers are 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 are, are, are barking, right? We're protesting, fighting against, bucking up against the system, right? America the Great's in a position of difficulty. Verse 23: When he is about to fill his belly, Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. Right? So. When, right when he thinks he's about to accomplish his, his new world order, his MOTV, his Revelation 13, verse 16, the Most High gonna put a stop to that, man. The Most High gonna reign. What does it say here? Yahweh shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Right? The Most High is gonna rain missiles in tandem with the laser beam from the chariots, what the world every cause UFOs 
upon America the Great, Babylon the Great, while he's eating in the midst of his agenda, in the midst of his, 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 his plan. Right? Thus saith the scriptures. Verse 24. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through. Right? Once again, the missiles, man. Let's read that again. Verse 24. Job 20, verse 24. He shall flee from the weapon. It's a lot. He shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel to strike him through. Right, the missiles, man. Esau, Esau, Edom, America the Great can't escape this, man. Let's get another scripture. Right, America's in the straits. There's so many holes in their enchantments, in their witchcraft, right? Isaiah 47, verse 1, and it reads, Come down and sit in the dust, right? Come down and sit in the dust. Dust is confusion. Oh, virgin daughter of Babylon, right? America, America, come down and sit in the dust. America's in a state of confusion right now. As a whole, right? Sit on the ground, there is no throne, right? They're, 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 they're being brought low. O daughter of the Chaldeans, right, America, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate, right? They're, not, they're no longer the benchmark of, 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 of the quote unquote so called free world. It isn't one of their, uh, one of their uh, titles, leader of the free world, right? They're no longer being called tender and delicate, man, right? Their leadership is, is, is all eyes is on their leadership. They're being they're, they become a laughing stock throughout the world, right? Doesn't it say shit. Oh, let's get that in Nahum. Shameful spewing, a gazing stock. It's a lot. It's in Nahum, right? The whole world, right? The whole world is looking at uh, America the Great. God. Nahum 3, verse 5, and it reads, Behold, I am against thee, saith Yahweh of hosts. Right, America, the Mosai, the Mosai Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, is against America, America the Great. And I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. Right, that's, that's going into Esau being exposed constantly. And we see it. Every day it's a new, a new breaking news of some, sort, some form of exposure pertaining to Esau Edom. Right? And I will show the nations thy nakedness, right? The, the whole world won't see your, 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 your shame. Your, 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 what, what, what you've been doing is secret, right? And the kingdoms thy shame, right? And I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile. I will set thee as a gazing stock, right? So the whole world is looking at, a, 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 is, is looking at America the Great. Right? They're no longer the benchmark. They're no longer considered tender and delicate. Right? Isaiah 47, verse 2. Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg. Right? That's going once again, going into Esau being exposed. Uncover thy, uncover thy, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Right? They're being exposed constantly. Yeah, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance. Right? Yahweh, well, Yahweh Shai is going to take vengeance. Yahweh is going to take vengeance through his son, Yahweh Shai. Right? And I will not meet thee as a man. Right? That's Yahweh Shai coming in those chariots, what the world even calls UFOs. He's not coming back as a man, man. He's coming back with the host of heaven. Right? Doesn't it say glory in, in thy apparel? Let's get that. I, uh, Isaiah 60, 60, uh, 63, verse 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? Right, America. 
who is this? Is who is this with dyed garments coming from America? This is symbolic of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, right? This that is glorious in his apparel, right? He's coming with the host of heaven, man. The chariots. What the world even calls UFOs. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, right? That's talking about Yahweh Shai coming with the host of heaven. And what's he gonna do? Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, right? This is symbolic, this is symbolic, saying his apparel, his clothing, his gesture is red. This is symbolic of all the killing he's gonna be doing, man. Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. And thy garments, like him that treadeth in the wine fat, right? In the ancient world, they treaded wine by, by stomping on it, and it was splattered. This is symbolic of all the bloodshed he's gonna be spilling, man. This is symbolic of all the blood Yahweh Shai gonna be spilling, all the killing. I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people, there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger, right? He, he's not coming to play. Yahweh Shai not coming to play. He's vexed. And trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stay my raiment. Right? Once again, symbolic of the killing he's gonna be doing, man. He's not literally gonna have blood on his 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 gar on his garments. It's symbolic, it's parabolic. Right? As the elder apostle Tahar would say, it's poetic. Verse 4, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, right? The Most High, his son Yahweh Shai, is thinking about this day, man. It's in his mind. He's thinking about the day of vengeance. And the year of my redeemed is come, right? That's the deliverance of the children of Israel, right? Israel being a people before a place, beginning with the elect. Right? All in the scriptures. Revelation 14, verse 20. Once again, we're going to go into a symbolism of, of the killing that's going to take place. Revelation 14, verse 20. And the winepress was tried without, without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horses' bridles, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs, right? That's symbolic, once again, of the amount of blood that Yahweh Shai gonna spill, man. It says up into the horse's bridles, right? That's the mouthpiece, the mouthpieces that go into the horses, right? Sim symbolic, right? Gonna close out. Daniel 2. All right, once once Yahweh Shai comes and reestablishes the kingdom of Israel on earth as it in heaven, as it is in heaven, that's it. Everlasting kingdom. Daniel 2, verse 44, and it reads. And in the days of these kings. So the power of heaven set up a kingdom, right? Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is going to set up a kingdom through his son, Yahweh Shai. In the day of these kings, these rulerships. We're in the fourth beast. Rome 2.0, right? America the Great has given life to ancient Rome. How? Through, 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 through his philosophy. Through, through, his, through, his, through, his, through his government. Right? Through his religion, through his money system, right? It's all, it's all, it's all, it's all birth from Rome, right? His political system, his two parties. Let's get that. Revelation two, so like Revelation eleven. So like Revelation thirteen, verse eleven. And, I, and this is a vision of John the Revelator on the Isle of Patmos. 
and I beheld another beast. Right, that beast is, 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 is America the Great, birth from Rome. Coming up out of the earth, out of the earth, and he had two horns, right? Ancient Rome had two, two political parties. America the Great has two political parties. Right? Like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, right? Like a lamb, you know, speaking softly, cunning, subtle, crafty, right? Spake as a dragon, that's, his, that's going into his laws. Draconian, and he's about to get more and more draconian. We see it happening. Through his gradualism, we see it happening. Every day it's more and more and more and more draconian. Right? Back into Daniel chapter two, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Right, this is the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven under Yahweh Shai. Never destroyed, never left to another people, man. Th th this is it, right? There's a narrative out there that Moab got, Moab got next. Nah, this is it. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever, right? So Yahweh Shai gonna crack that sky, show up on the scene, break in pieces all these kingdoms, establish the kingdom of Israel on earth as it is in heaven, and it shall stand forever. Right? That's it on that. Raka fi Yahweh, Raka fi Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka, Kwadash, Kwam Yashirala, Wa, Abad, Babal, 